It's been really great being on tour for Food Matters because it's something I've, I've felt for a while and, and I think I had this consistent message throughout my career, which is that people want to cook. But it's simple, it's rewarding, it's fulfilling, it's politically, environmentally correct and healthy and all that. But now I have this other layer, which is more political and in a way sort of subversive. And I'm really into being able to talk about it and people, people get it. So it's really been fun. It's been a fun week. I think not only do people get it, I think people are really hungry for it. Yeah. It's like the ones that say that they can't cook, they've been intimidated by uh, 35 ingredient recipes and incredibly uh, uh, odd processes that they need to learn how to do, but, but you've got a different message. Well, um, you know, until 50, 60 years ago, there was really only one way that people cooked at home. And then, um, and then after the war, so let's say 60 years ago, after the war, frozen food became really popular. There was a surplus of food. Food marketing began in earnest. Convenience became a sort of byword, catchword. And people started taking weird shortcuts and people started microwaving food eventually and reheating frozen dinners and so on and forgot how to cook. And then when, when people talked about cooking, it was as if there was some mystique to it. And then, and then we started to look at chefs and all these elaborate, as you say, elaborate things that chefs do. And it seemed hard because our mothers or many people's mothers hadn't taught them how to cook and fathers hadn't started cooking yet. And, uh, you know, there's a whole sociological explanation for all of this, which is long. But the point is cooking became almost a lost art. And now, so, and in fact, when I started writing about food, no one wanted to, I'm not a chef, I never was a chef. I always cooked at home. And um, when I started writing about food, the food editors didn't want my recipes. And I'd say, well, I have this great uh, Choucroute Garni recipe, and they'd say, that's wonderful, go get a Choucroute Garni recipe from a chef, and you write the story, and we'll be very happy with that. And that went on for, you know, I started writing in 1980, more or less. Um, and it wasn't until about 1990 that you could, as a food writer, sort of say, look, my recipes are legit. You know, they're fine, they're very simple, they're very straightforward. By that time, Marcello Hazan had become popular, some other people who were doing very straightforward food um, for home, home cooks became popular. And, um, and then I was able to start publishing recipes. And then, of course, I wrote How to Cook Everything, which kind of changed, certainly changed my life. And I know it's touched other people's also. And, um, but now, as, as you say, well, Food Matters is a different story. But in terms of simple cooking, you know, I was in the right place at the right time. People wanted to learn how to cook again, how to cook everything is very instructional and very, I like to think, friendly and, and direct and simple and straightforward and all of that stuff. Um, and I can't do complicated recipes. I don't really know how to do complicated. I mean, I could go learn, but it's counter to what I believe. So I just do straightforward stuff. Mark, tell me what unconscious eating has gotten us. <laughs> um, Fat, yeah. diabetic. Well, high blood pressure. Yes, well, yes, I, yes. I was just starting off the list for you. I mean, unconscious eating has gotten us to have the uh, a life expectancy that is forty fifth in the world. Um, so, given that we're the richest country in the world, you would think we could do a little better. But twenty years ago, we spent as a nation ten percent of our income on food and seventeen percent. Sorry, 10% of our income on healthcare and 17% on food. And now we spend 10% of our income on food and 17% on healthcare. And there's a correlation there. And the, the fact is that food is in a way too cheap. Food is subsidized heavily by the government. And um, food is grown and sold to be profitable, not to be delicious or healthy. So when you just accept that and you say, okay, I have, I'm having this diet of, I mean, this is extreme, but it's not that extreme. I'm having this diet of donuts or egg McMuffins for breakfast and snackables or cheeseburgers for lunch and pizza or other takeout for dinner. You're really asking for trouble in every, every way. You're asking for trouble in your own health. You're asking for economic trouble. You're asking for, 
uh, environmental trouble and you're even asking for, I mean, it is environmental, but this is even contributing to global warming. So it's a big deal. It's a really big deal.